What is up, everybody? I am Hunter with Lost Socket Garage. This is Chris, and today we're working on the new Project Mustang. In a world full of cheap coilovers, tow hooks, and eBay turbos, one man set out to create a channel to educate, motivate, break things, fix those things that he broke, but most importantly, make the mistakes so you don't have to. <laughs> Mother. Join him as he goes driving through life. All right, so last episode we rolled this bad boy in. Take a look, 67. Uh, we are planning to do a fastback conversion to it utilizing Dynacorn parts. Here's a piece now. This thing is actually pretty good conditioning. Uh, if you watched the last episode, uh, if you haven't, click the, the doodle, the, the link. Watch the, the, the doodle link right there. Click it and watch it. But give you a quick rundown. Uh, the back's coming off. The top's coming off. The uh, rear support's coming off. The interior supports behind the B-pillar are coming off. Everything's getting chopped. Uh, and also, we are going to power this via Flintstone method with Chris here, because he is not slacking on the leg day. He is going to be our motor. <laughs> Just kidding. Now, this is the old floor pan. Check this out. This thing is haggard. Uh, so if you're doing, if you're following along at home and doing this swap and you need to swap out your floor pan, make sure that you cut out this little bit. There is a square, cut this little square out, <laughs> cut this little square out, <clears throat> cut, son of a bitch, cut this little square out. It has the uh, little plate on back and that's for the seatbelt. We're just going to pop that out and weld it, in, weld it into the new floor. Um, just to show you around here, you see all that rust? That is a tenth of the rust. This thing was so rusty. It's incredible. But uh, cut that out. The pan for it, uh, I showed you a little bit earlier. It's a Dynacorn replacement. When you're doing a floor pan in a car... Uh, Oh yeah, work it. Uh, when you're doing a floor pan in a car, make sure that... Do that again with a little... <laughs> uh, when you're doing a floor pan in a car, make sure that uh, you actually set the replacement floor pan, pan in and then trace out... I don't know if we have anything left that's traced. Uh, you're going to trace out with like a marker or something uh, where the new pan goes so that you don't cut out too much metal... Um, and you actually have something to weld to. So we left about an inch, half inch, or something like that uh, from where the actual replacement's going to go. Now, you'll also notice that there is a cage kind of welded into the car. Now, some of you may be saying, Hunter, that's not the direct, right direction for a roll cage. It's not a roll cage, kids. Uh, Mustangs are a unibody. Uh, so no frame. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to be jacking this car up, uh, making sure that it is all level, and we're chopping so much metal out of it that it's not going to have a lot of support, and we don't want the rest of the body to uh, shift or twist or anything like that. So, since she's not even off the ground yet, what we did is went ahead and welded in a cross brace. Like So, we started off with a little T, and then we put braces down to just inside of the wheel wells uh, and it's probably a little bit overkill but honestly we don't want this thing shifting whatsoever um, we did the exact same thing and that car worked out really really well um, so make sure that you brace this so next step is once we have completely cleaned out the floor pan we want to weld in the floor pan first so that the car has a little bit more uh, strength when we actually put it on jack stands. Um, so we're going to finish cleaning this up and weld the new pan in. Are you excited? Yeah, I'm real excited. Uh, real excited? Now the fun part begins. The fun part begins. Let's get to the fun part. Hey, you watching the video. If you like it, like and subscribe. <laughs>
All right, here we are, balls deep into the fun part. Um, you'll notice a couple of things are missing, like the back of the car. Well, we did not need to save the roof, so we just cut it in half and then cut it off. Right? Imagine, imagine there was something right in that area that that, that was at the end of the roof. We would have cut that off. Um, then we cut off the fenders, obviously, uh, whole back half of the car. Uh, we cut off the corners here because we are actually going to reuse the uh, taillight um, housing, taillight panel. panel thank you. <laughs> I can need to drink more coffee. So uh, we got all of these body panels off in a couple of different ways. We got the, some of it we just cut off. Like, so for example, the wheel wells we cut off and then we had to come in here and I'll show you. Uh, these are going to be spot welded together. So there's a seam on the uh, wheel well itself that presses against here. And then the, uh, you know, the factory takes a spot weld and, and uh, basically welds these little notches. So to take it off, uh, the easiest way typically is to take off the big chunk with just a, a cutting wheel or something like that. And then come in here and just take the trim off. Now, there's a really good procedure to take off the trim that... Our lovely resident Vanna White is going to show us. <laughs> Christopher White, Vanna Vanna Hall. <laughs> I'll think of a good name. We'll think of one. So, how? First off, what is the best way to find these factory spot welds? Um, first of all, if they really like to show up when you take all the rust off with the the wire wheel, something like that. The majority of them can get spotted with that because it'll be mostly just like a little round spot. <laughs> and I'll, I'll show you, we actually, we already wire wheeled this and we started the process on this back side. But once you take the wire wheel uh, on here, you see these little, these little circles. These are factory spot welds. Now I've already drilled them, so I'm, I'm all the way to the next lesson. Chris, tell us what you do <laughs> after you find... So, when you find it, you want to take one of these uh, pilot hole punches and it actually centers the bit so it doesn't walk off because sometimes you can get it and start it and it'll actually move. So this keeps it in the little groove so it won't, won't move. So you just put it where you want, push, and it actually makes a little, a little dent in there for your drill bit. Do a close up for the kids at home. See that little, 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 where's my finger? Chris, pull my finger so I know where it is. Oh, <laughs> right there. Then what? Then you'll take a drill bit, which is about the same size as the little dowel in your spot weld cutter, because that actually keeps it centered so the spot weld doesn't, the spot weld cutter doesn't go all over the place. So then, take your mighty drill bit and drill through the spot weld all the way, just like that. Now this one, when we drilled it, you could see that this two, the two pieces of metal actually separated, so this spot weld's actually probably not all the way through, but it's the same process for an actual spot weld. So then you take your spot weld cutter after that, and you'll insert this aligning dowel into that hole you just drilled. Make sure it's going the right way. And the only thing that you're looking forward to, looking for, is to go through this first piece of metal. You don't want to go all the way through because then you just have a big hole. Once you cut through this first piece, it'll be separate. It'll be separated from the other metal piece that they welded to. And you'll kind of get the hang of this after a couple of hundred of them. Um, sometimes a good indication, especially if the car is quite a bit older, um, there'll be a little poof of rust that pops out because mm -hmm. rust will form in the seam. And so once you bust into that seam, uh, a little rust cloud will come out. And then at that point, we are ready to take the mighty screwdriver can actually go in there and it'll actually separate it. Bam! And so you just do that 
On all of them. On all of them. <laughs> on every single one of them. There is not a shortage of those. So to recap, a couple of the tools we've been using that have been incredibly helpful. The first thing you'll need is a drill bit around, what was it? 330 seconds. 330 seconds. It's tiny. But it is going to be dependent on your uh, dowel. Um, and if we take a look at this, just to kind of give you a little bit of focus now. Chris, where'd you get these? So we got these Amazon? On Amazon. Okay. So that little dowel goes through the hole. So you're going to want a drill bit that's about the size of that dowel. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, and typically they come in like a little case like this that have a bunch of repla replacement tips on them because they do wear out. Um, not too often, thankfully, but they do wear out. Uh, a giant ass saw. That helps a <laughs> lot, actually. Uh, air chisel. That's very nice. A grinder or two or three or a must with cutting and grinding wheels. Because what we do is once all of this is taken off, uh, you're going to notice that these uh, spot welds stick out. Uh, so you have to come in and actually flatten them out with a grinding wheel. Um, now, I actually got all the rust off of this surface with the newest toy in the arsenal, Chastity. We're not naming her. We may name her Chastity. I don't know. Chris wants to name her a stripper name because it's really funny because... It's a really it, nice stripper. It's it's a nice stripper. <laughs> this is an Eastwood awesome stripper. I don't even know. Is there like a... I'm guessing it's a Contour SCT. Yeah, that one. Contour SCT. Look at that. That sounds like a Ford. You know, they made the Contour SVT. Yeah, yeah. That was a weird ass car. Uh, and a wire brush on the front of it. This thing is freaking ridiculous. It just, it just takes the paint off. It's fabulous. So, uh, next steps here. We've got the car mostly apart. Um, we need to take out this B pillar. Actually, we're going to take out the entire B pillar because one of the things that we noticed here is there's quite a bit of rust in the very bottom. And B pillars are structural, um, as you may or may not know. I have a question for you, Chris. Mm -hmm. What do you what do you think that rope was used for? That rope? Yeah. Um, Tied around a leaf spring. I'm guessing they needed to move some bales of hay, so they decided to tie it to the leaf spring and drag it along with the car. I like it. I like that idea. I was thinking of hanging a troll doll from it. <laughs> like you know, like the, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like the old school troll dolls. I want to do my hair like that. That's going to be our next video. Uh, there is some fabbing that needs to be done. Uh, again, these pieces are, are pretty rotted. Chris did an awesome job on, on Yasmin. I like to say Yasmin because it sounds fancier, uh, of actually fabbing this piece on both sides because the, I mean, this is right behind the wheel well. So it gets, uh, it gets rusty pretty damn quick. It's behind the fender. So the other side is the side I've been working on. I'm a little bit farther than Hunter. We've actually cut out that piece because it's rotted. And just like Hunter said, we'll fabricate a piece out of steel that'll replicate the exact shape of the old piece and weld it in right here. And we actually use the, the old piece as a template mm -hmm. and then kind of a guesstimation on some of it because most of it's rotted out. Yeah. And then we can adjust it when we have the quarter panels on. Because the quarter panel actually will sit on that piece. Now this is a good example of after every, everything is uh, ground down. Um, you just see like little tiny holes. Um, because this is a very, very clean surface that you can weld to. And we can put the new wheel well in. Tell us about what happened here. So when I took off the wheel well, this lip, that's pretty structural. I mean, it's pretty good down here. It was actually rotted and this is where the wheel well was actually rotted. So when we took it out, this lip actually disintegrated. So we're just building a new lip instead of new floor pans. So yeah, so this is a good, uh, a good example of saving what you can and just kind of filling in the missing pieces. No need to put an entire new floor pan in. Uh, speaking of the floor pan, it is actually most of the way done all the way in again dynacorn makes really awesome pieces they just fit right in the only thing we have to do uh, you'll notice that sitting there i think i spoke about that a little bit earlier we need to weld that bad boy right in for the uh the seat belt but chris did a great job of welding this 
this in so it needs uh, some finishing touches and then to grind down how much crap could be in a rocker panel you may ask after 50 years let's find out Yesterday, nothing was on this. Uh, roof was off. Um, I think there was one B pillar left. But we were able to get the B pillar off today uh, and get it to where we could actually mock a few of these things up. Uh, put on the fender. None of this is welded yet. This is just kind of bolted and screwed down just to make sure everything fits correctly. Which again, this entire kit is from Dynacorn. And the thing, man, they just make such good stuff. This is not sponsored by any means, but if someone from Dynacorn is listening, we could we could totally use the sponsorship. Yeah. Hi Dynacorn. How are you? Just want to say hi. Just repping your products. Uh so what is welded are the wheel wells. And yeah, that's, that's about it. Uh B pillars brand new on this car. Uh, roof skin, brand new, obviously. These are, this is the structure for um, the actual fastback. And then we have the trunk separator and filler panel. Uh, inside, there's a little patch on the corner there that uh, we still need to do. But otherwise, it's got uh, that panel is actually already done, which is cool. Uh, this panel is brand new as of a couple of days ago. So this is really, really coming together. Let's get an engine shot here. Hi. Hi, 351. How are you? Just waiting to get fired up. Doesn't have a harness right now, though. We're actually we're going to do new fuses. Or uh, new wiring harness with uh, new style fuses versus the old glass ones. Updated a little bit so that whoever ends up with this Beautiful Pony has uh, the ability to do pretty much whatever they want if they want to go fuel injection with it or all modern stuff. Uh, so we have to redo this. But other than that, and things are really coming along. We're really cruising along on this bad boy. Brand new B-pillars. Now, a couple of things on this Mustang. It is a 67. Uh, we do have the title for it. As of right now... This Mustang is available. Um, we're obviously, it's too late to go back to a coupe. So if you're looking for a 67 Mustang coupe, this is not the right vehicle for you. But if you've always wanted a fastback, which I'm not a huge Ford guy, I'm not going to lie. You guys who know me, know me, know that I'm Chevy and Mopar. But, uh, you know, the fastback is just, it's incredibly iconic. So if you ever wanted a fastback Mustang, uh, PM us, you know, let us know. Maybe we can put something together for you. This Mustang is for sale. Now, one of the benefits is if one of you out there is interested in a fastback, let us know now because we're just going to do whatever the hell we want to this damn thing and sell it as is at the end. But if someone contacts us now about the Mustang, you have carte blanche. See that? I'm getting French in this bitch. <laughs> Carte blanche. <laughs> uh, you could do anything you wanted. We could throw a 427 in it, four link suspension, new trans, new gauges, updated gauges, go for the classic look. You could do basically whatever you wanted to and you can customize it essentially from the ground up. So that's a good option. If you're interested in this Mustang, definitely let us know. Otherwise, man, just keep tuning in and watch the build. It's a fun process to do. It's uh, probably fun to watch, to be honest with you. You don't get the metal shavings in your face all the damn time. I picked a nickel worth of metal out of my nose last night. That was awesome. So that's about it for this episode. Next episode is going to be real, real fun. So to follow along, hit subscribe. And we're going to start doing YouTube Lives when I figure out the modern technology of it. Uh, but you have to hit the notifications. So when you see it, just you know, hit the little bell, little bell notification after you subscribe, you know. Little bell, ring a ding, 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 ding. ding. That kind of actually almost worked. If you want some merchandise, right now we're giving away five hundred dollars 
Every $5 you spend on the website gets you one entry. Some lucky winner is going to get 500 bucks, and you're going to get some cool merchandise in the uh, interim. So shirts, uh, lost socket uh, keychains, we have piston clocks left, we have keychain holders, we have a ton of parts on the website as well. So if you go to lostsocketgarage.com and you don't find the parts that you need there, that's fine, just shoot us a message. Follow us on Facebook, turn on the notifications there too. Uh, where else should they follow us? The Instagrammers. The Instagrammers can follow us at Lost Socket Garage. I did say Facebook. Facebook. You guessed it, Lost Socket Garage. So, until next time. Be happy. Do what you love. Don't be a dick. And as always, keep on driving. We'll be right back.